So I'm gonna create some very simple prosthetic pieces to create some classic kind of makeup effects looks. Um, the first one I'm gonna do is a Joker smile. Now, I've got some plastic wrap here. I put a little Vaseline on the face and I've laid some plastic wrap on uh, the Vaseline is to make it stick on the face very easily. Now, this isn't the makeup. What I'm doing is taking a tracing because I want to work out the size of the scars. If I just model, we're going to model them on a flat surface. If I just model them straight on a flat surface, I might make them too big, too small, kind of the wrong angle. So instead, what I've done is I draw it out. I map it out directly on your subject's face or some, you know, someone else's face. It doesn't really matter as long as you're just working on a face. You can then work out the, the right angles and orientation and then move the plastic wrap onto, I'm using a ceramic tile here, very cheap, simple ceramic tile you can get in hardware stores. And I just laid the plastic wrap there and I've just used a pencil to kind of trace the outline. I've also put the letter R in the corner there, which is going to just remind me that this is the right cheek and which way up it is because once you transfer that shape to the tile with a pencil it's very easy to kind of if you've got a few of these you're sculpting it's very easy to lose track of what it what piece you're working on so so um the sculpting is being done in uh le beau touche which is a, a soft plastiline modeling medium it's very easy to model with and I've just used some little balls of clay and little sausages of clay and I've laid them out following my pencil outline there. And I've laid them out into the shape I want and then I've used modeling tools like a wooden tool and a wire tool here to blend the surface together. And then I'm just gonna go in, refine it, blend the outer edge off into the tile. Because you remember with a prosthetic appliance, this needs to blend into the face really smoothly that's the success of a piece is how well it blends into the face so i've feathered out the edge of the clay into the face and then i've textured here a little bit of that kind of coarse black sponge adds a nice skin texture now the other piece i'm going to i'm going to do two pieces one in gelatin and one in latex so the other one i'm going to do is kind of a fused together mouth um and here I'm, I'm doing the similar thing with the plastic wrap, but I'm just doing it on an old live cast I had. And again, this just helps me work out the shape, the size, the area this piece will cover. Um, it, it, you know, this is, you could do it on a person, you could do it on a, a live cast if you have one, or if you haven't got live cast, even a mannequin head, anything that's going to give you an approximate shape and size. Because also there's curvatures to a face and if if you put the plastic wrap on and model when you lay it flat it gives you the correct curvature whereas if again if you just model it flat without that reference sometimes you can end up with things just not fitting correctly on the face so again i'm just using the lebeau touche nice soft plastic and i've put a an edge around where the edge of my piece is going to go and now i'm now modeling in the middle and i'm just create trying to create this fused together skin look now i've picked these two looks because they're the kind of things i often see people do uh, you know when you're starting out when it's your first kind of uh, go at doing special makeup and it's the kind of thing i often see people do either with uh, direct applied kind of latex and tissue paper on a face for this kind of fused together mouth or you know with the joker smile it might be done with scar wax or something like that so i thought i'd tackle these two because it get, i wanted to show that you can very simply create prosthetic pieces to do this um because mo most people think that kind of tissue and latex and scar wax uh, are the cheapest and simplest way to do this but actually you know it's not difficult to model and make your own prosthetic pieces and the material, this is a very inexpensive process, very simple process, uh, and and the results are better than something that's direct applied, and they're more durable, uh, and they're more professional. So I specifically wanted to tackle these subjects to kind of show that it's not a hugely difficult thing to, to do to create your first prosthetic appliances like this. So here I'm creating what we call the flashing, 
around our Joker appliance. We're going to make a little plaster mold and it's going to be in gelatin. And to create the gelatin appliance, we're creating what's called a squeeze mold, a two piece mold where we're going to have a negative mold in plaster. And then we're going to fill it with gelatin and squeeze another half to the mold. And the other half will be the ceramic tile. And that's going to squeeze out the excess and produce a, an appliance. This flashing is where the excess gelatin is going to squeeze into. And the white line, the exposed tile around our prosthetic piece, is the area where the, the tile and the mold are going to touch together and pinch it, pinch the gelatin to create our prosthetic edge. So you'll see when I cast these how that works. But this is basically showing the process for creating that. We, we create this flashing around. We leave a, a band of white of the tile visible cover the rest in clay and here i've just taken regular kind of mixing sticks and created a little wall a retaining wall all the way around because we're going to fill this with plaster now i'm going to use a little release agent this is mac wax it's a wax spray it literally is wax dissolved in a solvent and we're going to spray that onto um, our sculpture so you've I've got each cheek ready there so I've given them a, a coating of wax and that's just going to help the clay come out of our mold more cleanly so I'm using plaster um, you don't need the best plaster in the world you can probably find plaster of Paris in, in um, craft stores and you, you add the plaster to the water. You don't sprinkle and mix it as you go. You just keep adding the plaster until you get this kind of island. And then once that the island is kind of still visible, but it has soaked up the, mo the excess moisture, then you mix the plaster. And I put my finger in there because what I wanted to see is if I get an even coating of white, so it's almost like a double cream consistency, then that's a pretty good mix of plaster. Now, I've used a brush and I'm brushing on the plaster to get into all my detail. And then once I think I've got an, a nice layer there, I then fill up each of the tiles and I'm banging the surface. I'm kind of tapping them and that's going to let any little air bubbles rise to the surface. Now I'm going to do a similar thing with the fused together mouth, except I don't put the flashing on it. I haven't built that clay edging all the way around. I've just left it the tile. And that's because I'm doing this one in latex and it's, it's slightly different how we work it. Now here I'm just doing a little thing. I've taken some fixing spray. This is just a makeup fixative spray. And I'm spraying this over first. And then once this is dried, I'll do the wax. And then once the wax has dried, I put a bit of talcum. Now I was just doing a little comparative to see how well the mold, how clean the mold comes out because sometimes if you can get the piece, the mold to come off very cleanly and save your sculpture, then you can kind of make little tweaks to your sculpture and do variations. So I just thought I'd try, what if I put a bit of fixing spray to seal the clay surface before the wax? What will happen to each of the molds and whether it works better? So these are my Joker cheek pieces. Uh, that's just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol there. That softens the hot glue, makes it easy to, to get the edge off. and you can see here, I've popped it open. Now, there's a little bit of clay still stayed on the surface and it pulled up my sculpture a bit. It's not really a problem. We don't normally save the sculptures, but it's just worth, uh, it's, it was just a little experiment I did at the time and I thought I'd see what difference it made. So here I'm cleaning the mold. I'm just using a little lighter fluid, uh, which dissolves the clay and we'll get rid of it. And you can see they clean up very well. They clean up fine and this is both my molds. Now this was the fused together mouth where I used the fixing spray first, just to give me a little skin, and then used the wax and a bit of talcum. You can see it popped off really clean. So that's just gonna save me cleaning it up. And also, you know, if I wanted to, that sculpture has been kind of saved and I could do some tweaks and do another mold. 